Okay. So we have South Dakota School of Mines and Technology. The sun is dead, respecting local cultures. So with that, Peggy, go ahead. All right. Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm switching tracks from the more technical side of things to the more social side of things. And I think our team has Salish Kootenay beat in as far as age diversity. So I just put that up front. Um, I think it goes from like 16 to 71. And um, when it comes to students, uh, the diversity of experience, we have um, high school sophomores all the way up through uh, one of our uh, students um, from School of Mines actually graduated in December after the October eclipse and is now at SpaceX. So we have a, a large range of diversity on our, on our team. Um, and I want to point out this picture. Um, this is um, Brandy. She's the youngest member of our team. And um, tried to give everybody a role that they were comfortable with. And um, she's at Lakota Tech High School. They were in charge of designing the payload box for one of the Iridiums and a GoPro. And she made it into a Pokeball. And she spent many, many hours doing that. But um, uh, she's very, very proud of it. So, and it works just like any other one, sorry. Go back one. Um, so our team is South Dakota School of Mines plus our original team, three high schools from the area, uh, Newcastle, Wyoming, Spearfish, South Dakota, and Lakota Tech, which is on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. Um, after we got started, we um, got additional funding from the South Dakota Space Grant Consortium and added Lower Brule High School, which is another reservation in South Dakota. I'll show you a map in a minute, plus Southwest Middle School. So now we have uh, five K-12 schools involved as well as the university. And um, for the New Mexico Eclipse, we took 15 high school students and five college students, plus all the teachers, plus two families who traveled with their students and so it was quite a group. We went to Farmington, New Mexico. Um, here's a map from the, um, oh, I'm sorry. Where did that go? Okay, here's a map from the Eclipse website. And this is circled here are our four original teams. And one of the, um, issues that we deal with is the distances because Rapid City is the star in the middle and uh, Pine Ridge is two hours to the south, Newcastle's an hour west, Spearfish is an hour north, Lower Brule is three hours east. So it's a lot of traveling. So our team is never all together at the same time. People come when they can for the practice launches and um, they came for some summer workshops, but um, in general, until we got out to New Mexico, we never really had the whole team together. And so um, um, we spent a day, a work day out there, and that helped a lot in building our team, um, our team uh, dynamics um, going into the eclipse day. Um, I want to mention a little bit about the cultural aspects where we are. Uh, this is the Northern Great Plains region. Um, and South Dakota itself has nine Indian tribes, and you can see the surrounding states do too. And pretty much all of these tribes consider the Black Hills of South Dakota, which is where Rapid City is and where um, I'm located, to be sacred land. And it's very sacred to all the tribes. Um, they have some um, strong cultural considerations about it that we take um, uh we respect in everything we do. And uh, one thing that I'd like to just point out is that they have their star knowledge. Traditionally, they use the stars to tell them when to plant, when to go from one meeting to another. And their, uh, the Lakota star map is actually reflects all the geographical um, and spiritual um, uh, landmarks of the Black Hills, including things like Devil's Tower. 
which is close to Newcastle and um, uh, Bear Butte out in Sturgis. And so all these are reflected in the map. So um, it's just something to think about as we think about cultural considerations. So we were pretty aware of all of this and we uh, talked about it in our summer workshops and so forth. But then uh, as we're planning the eclipse travel, uh, we decided, or I kind of uh, decided that Farmington would be a good area to go to. First, because it was uh, one long day's drive, um, but also because it's a gorgeous area of the country to be taking video over and so forth. But it's also got a huge number of Indian tribes itself, including the whole Navajo reservation out here. And um, as we did the initial prediction, or as um, Montana provided the initial predictions of um, path predictions, uh, it looked like we, in order to center ourselves in Farmington, uh, there was about a 70% chance that we would have to launch from out here on Navajo land. And there was about a 30% chance that we would have to launch up from Colorado on Ute land. And in fact, the week ahead of the eclipse, as I did one prediction after another, there were days when it looked like we might have to launch from any one of these four states. So we could not make a decision until a couple of days out, um, really where we were launching from, sure, um, from for sure. And But we hadn't really thought too closely about the... Um, potential cultural aspects of this because in South Dakota, um, there was no, there are no issues with the tribes um, looking at eclipses being around. We've had involvement from the um, local tribes both in 2017 and here and this year. So we hadn't thought about it as an issue until a couple of weeks before the eclipse, this article came up on space.com that all these Navajo tribal parks were closing during the October 14th eclipse. And so that got us concerned since it looked like we had a good possibility we'd need to launch from Navajo land that this was going to turn into an issue. Um, so in the end, it didn't. Uh, the um, uh, places like Four Corners and Monument Valley and Canyon de Shelley were all closed, but the Navajo land itself was not, all the businesses were closed because um, uh, they stay inside, they pray, and um, they don't come back out until the eclipse is over. And where does this come from? Well, this is a really long article, um, piece of an article that I found um, that was published back in 2017 about the way that the Diné people or the Navajo look at eclipses. And basically they think about it as being a rebirth of the sun moon system. And that um, during the eclipse, they have to be in full prayer. They don't eat or drink or go to the bathroom during the eclipse. They stay inside, they do not look at it. And um, they think about the future, they make resolutions and so forth. So we talked to a lot of people while we were down in the Farmington area, and this is serious um, for the Navajo people. Um, but for our team, um, it became clear that we did need to be on Navajo land for launch. And um, as it turned out, as I said, only the tribal parks were actually closed. So we, um, but um, in order to, I didn't want to launch from a town because that might disrespect um, everybody who was trying to stay inside and pray. So we found this location that was a church along the highway, um, uh, pretty far away from the major Navajo houses and businesses. And it had a nice parking lot with a, a trailhead for a trail. Um, so it was kind of public land. And uh, we got uh, permission to launch there from the Navajo Tourist Board after calling a whole bunch of different offices to try to figure out who could give us permission. Um, they did. And um, as it turned out, it worked out very well. 
uh, the pastor of the church was non-Navajo and he was around and he opened up the uh, facilities for our launch site team, which was about 20 people. And this is just a picture from one of the payloads as they were getting ready from the 360 camera of them filling the balloon with the church on the background during the launch. So it went well, and um, uh, but for the few days leading up to the eclipse, we were really worried that we weren't gonna get permission to launch from Navajo land, and then we weren't sure what we were gonna do. And so I just wanna conclude with a couple of things about the student interactions that, that really impressed me. One for our own students, and then one for the Dene students. So before um, we saw the article on space.com, I had already made arrangements to have an outreach day at Navajo Prep High School in uh, Farmington. And it's a uh, residential um, and day school that's um, actually owned by the Navajo um, Nation. And um, I was gonna talk to them about eclipses, but the administration did not want to show a picture of an, us to show a picture of an eclipse basically. So I talked to them about the project. I showed them pictures of the ballooning. We talked about the Lakota team uh, members coming. And, and we talked a lot about dark matter because I had an hour and a half with each class. And so it was a great day. Uh, very, very good students. And, but they were, none of them were going to be able to see the eclipse. So there wasn't any point in giving away eclipse glasses. Um, but uh, but it was a very good day nonetheless, and we're continuing interactions with that school. Um, and then for our own students, here's our team with um, Shiprock in the background. Uh, this was on the uh, the work day, uh, the day uh, before the eclipse. And after um, getting our payloads and stuff unpacked and checked out, we drove out to the town of Shiprock, and I had found a local. It was a fast food restaurant, but it had Navajo food and it was locally owned. So we all went in and had lunch there. And um, what really impressed me was how friendly everybody was. And the students got to talking with the Navajo community members and they came out afterwards and they said, you know, they don't even get to go to the bathroom tomorrow. <laughs> and So it really impressed them so much more than if we had just talked to them about the, um, uh, about the beliefs of the Navajos. So it's just something to think about as we travel around the country or even maybe to other countries doing this kind of work is that we have to think about um, the um, cultural aspects of where we're going and the place we are gonna be working. So thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, any questions? I didn't have any questions, but thank you, Peggy, for bringing this up. This is Eric Abramson from St. Kate's. I just really appreciate um, hearing the story. And I think one of the things that I really appreciate about the NABP materials is that my students, when I taught this class, uh, we covered a lot of the historical and, and religious aspects of eclipses. And, and my students were really, really drawn the intro class that I did. They were, they in fact, they wanted more. They said, can you give us more lessons? So I actually had to come up with a, an additional lecture and a half of material because they just, they couldn't get enough of that. So just, I really right. appreciate this. I kind of wished I had gone and done more research ahead of time. Of course, we were all being um, really busy prepping, but the the night before the eclipse, the uh, Farmington Library had a, uh, a panel of astronomers and that came up and nobody really knew um, the history behind why um, the uh, cultural taboos on the eclipses in the Navajo and Ute tribes and some of the um, uh, Pueblo tribes as well. But I suspect that there must have been an eclipse that went through there at some of the early days of these tribes in the Southwest. And that's why that it's something that's important down there where it may not be important in other parts of the country. So I'd like to do some research about that sometime. But it, it's worrisome to me that yeah. the people you were talking to about going there, the people there, didn't warn you about this. <laughs> well, even the teachers at the Navajo Prep School, um, until I kind of read uh, 
the stuff online, I was just going to go in and give them a full talk on eclipses. And the teachers who were not Navajo, they didn't warn me about it either. But I was uh, really careful about that. And then that night I went to dinner with a couple of the science teachers and they said, well, the administration was sneaking in to look to make sure that you got you weren't showing any pictures of eclipses. <laughs> I think, well, it's a good thing I didn't, but it would have been nice to know ahead of time. So. Yep. All right. Um, if there's no other questions, um, we are pretty much out of time, although we're doing okay on time. So, but Peggy, thank you so much uh, for that talk and everything. Very much appreciate it.